Katie and Rhonda for that beautiful offertory this morning. If you have your copy of God's Word, I invite you to go ahead and be turning to the New Testament book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, as we look at verses 3 through 8 this morning. Today is Children's Ministry Sunday, and so in just a few moments, uh, Ms. Robin is going to come and share some uh, ways that you can be involved and serve in children's ministries as uh, we uh, get forward, uh, look forward to opening a new school year, a new church year. Uh, but as we think about children's ministry, uh, Ms. Joe, during our Membership Matters class, and we've got another Membership Matters class coming up September 26th, so if you have not yet joined Ramoth, if you have been attending and want to know more about Ramoth Baptist Church and our ministries and how to join, uh, we would encourage you, invite you to come to that Membership Matters class on September 26th. But at that class, every time she teaches, she, she reminds us that church and Ramoth Baptist Church is not a country club, it is a church. And there's a, a stark difference between a country club. If you pay dues to a country club, particularly if you've got children, if you want to bring those children, maybe they have children's activities that you can have them go to while you go out and play golf or you do other things, uh, you can pay for those children's activities. They're just merely activities to pass the time, maybe so that you can go out and play golf, maybe that you can go out on a date, you can do something else. And so a country club is merely about... uh, entertaining the children in different activities. Uh, Folks, that is not the church. That's not what we do at Ramoth Baptist Church. Indeed, that's not what churches should do because we are not a country club. We are the body of Christ. We are a church, and there is a difference between activities that you do just to keep children busy and activities that even in nursery, even when we may not even understand how the little babies in the nursery are understanding it, that we can share what we just sang a moment ago, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me, and we can share Jesus loves you with those children, even the the infants in our nursery, because there's a difference between activities and sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is what we're called to do from nursery all the way up to our senior adults. Why why is that important? Why why do I start that way this morning? Because not only are there opportunities to serve families and children at Ramoth Baptist Church, as you'll hear in just a moment, but it's important because of this. Statistics show, and, and understand God's not a God of statistics, but if we ignore statistics, we ignore them at our own peril. Study after study after study after study after study has shown and bears this out that the overwhelming majority of folks who come to faith in Jesus Christ do so as children. Upwards of 85% between the ages of 4 and 14. That's significant. That Now, are some of us outside that? Absolutely. But let's just take a, a small sample. We did this in the first service. How many of you came to faith between the ages of, say, 4 and 14 years of age? I need Brother Gary to help me count the, uh, okay, you can put your hands down, okay. Another 10% came to faith between the ages of 15 and 30. How many between 15 and 30? Less. And only 4% came to faith after the age of 30. A few, but I gotta, I've got to look really. God can do anything at any time with anybody. And we're a testament to that. But we better not, we should not ignore the reality that most people will come to faith between the ages of 4 and 14. That's significant because we have an opportunity right here at Ramoth Baptist Church to pour into the lives of children and of students the meaning and message and hope that is found in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That's why we do what we do. It's not just to be busy. It's not just, we're busy enough. Anybody busy? Can I get an amen? There you go. We're not, we're not doing, what was that? Okay, we will try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, can I say, she's going to preach, testify, whatever. You, Miss Robin, you come on. So if you, if you can't tell that, that she's enthusiastic about children's ministry here at Ramoth Baptist Church, then I need to visit with you 
after the service is over. But she's going to share about ways you can be involved in children's ministry as we impact families. All right, the good morning, Christ. church. Good morning. Man, it's good to be here. We've got a house full downstairs. So in children's ministry here at Raymond Baptist Church, we have so many things going on. Right now, downstairs, birth through second grade, the children are down there learning from answers in Genesis. They are learning the foundation of what God did when he created the earth and to bring to Jesus. And then during the 930 service, that happens at the 815 as well. During the 930 service, we have Sunday school happening, again, from birth through sixth grade. And those kids are learning. We've got some of the most fantastic Sunday school teachers that any church could ever have. We have teachers who've been teaching for 50 years, teachers who are just starting out, and everything, everything in between. If you're a Sunday school teacher here, if you're one who works in our children's worship classes, thank you so very much. You are the ones who are discipling our kids here at Ramoth. Now, we definitely, in children's ministry, go by Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Pastor, that is not where you are at. I want to get to my Bible. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto their children. Talk about them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. That is how we came up with Rise Up Children's Ministry. We want to rise up children in this church who know the Lord, who serve the Lord, and who go out in his name and win others to the Lord. Well, how do we do that in children's ministry? So we know how we're discipling on Sunday. Well, on Wednesday night, we have our Awana program. Many of you out here I see are those who help and serve in our Awana program. Our Awana program runs during the school year on Wednesday nights from 6.05 to 7.30. We start out with an awesome worship time, and then we go through three rotations with the kids. They learn scripture memory. They learn about missions, and they also have a super great game time or music time that they go to. If Awana is something that you're interested in, we have a table out here in the foyer. It's uh, information for you if you'd like to be a leader or a helper, or if your children would like to attend Awana, we would love to have them. Another way that we um, are reaching children with the gospel is through the Good News Club. If you're not familiar with the Good News Club, it is an amazing program that goes right into the public schools. Did you know that your kids can take their Bibles to school? They can. They can put it right in their backpack. And after school, we have three teams who are dedicated to taking the gospel to these schools. We have Rocky Run, we have Winding Creek Elementary, and Garrisonville. All three of those clubs could use your help. Some of these clubs, well, all of our clubs run at least 60 or more children who come to listen every Tuesday or Friday, depending on which club you're in. The club starts about 345, 350, and ends somewhere between 5 and 515. Uh, they get to do awesome worship. They get to play games. They get to hear a Bible story. They get to have a snack. They are, I'm telling you, we are sharing the gospel in public schools like you didn't think we could, but we can, and you need to be a part of it. It is the way to reach kids who may not be able to come here. We're even telling our children who go here to church or other children who come to our program that go to another church who preaches the gospel. You need to be a missionary in the public school. Your friends might not be allowed to come with you to church, but I bet you anything they'd be allowed to stay after school and go to a club. So if you're interested in good news clubs, we begin about the middle of October and run through the month of April. Tuesday at Garrisonville and Winding Creek, Friday at Rocky Run. There's also a table out in the foyer for anyone who'd like to talk to, to uh, Susan uh, Shores is out there to represent the good news club. Another way that children's ministry is impacting Stafford County is through our MOPS program. MOPS stands for Mothers of Preschoolers. Now, it doesn't just have to be preschool moms. This is infant through kindergarten. So those are the moms who can come. Infant through, uh, I'm sorry, pregnancy, I think. Are any of my girls in here? I think you can also be expecting. So if you're expecting a child or up through, um, if you have a child in kindergarten, the second and fourth Mondays of every month, starting on September the 10th, our MOPS program is held. This is a fantastic opportunity. If you know in your neighborhood 
a mom who's, who's at home with a preschooler or she's expecting, invite her. She's going to hear the gospel. She's going to hang out with other moms. Her children are going to be in classes that we hold where they'll also be learning Bible stories. We'll be uh, holding their babies and helping them. We also need moms who've been there, done that. If you're a mom who's already raised your kids, we need mentor moms, ladies who will go in and be a part of that program. Just be there. You've been there. You've done that. And they need to know that God answers prayers and God has a plan going forward for them and their little ones. So that program, MOPS, is very much an outreach. We definitely want our moms here who have little ones to come. But we also want you as a church to look around your neighborhood, look at your neighbors, and invite them to this program. There is a table out there uh, that our ladies are sitting at uh, who run our MOPS program, and they would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I wanted to, I didn't mention this in the last service, but I wanted to bring this back to your attention. We have these uh, forms, they're called My Sermon Notes, front and back. If you are in the service and you are one of our kids from Rise Up Children's Ministry, even some adults I've heard take these, I don't know. <laughs> but you can take sermon notes, and then mom and dad, that gives you an opportunity to talk with your little one and find out what they knew, or maybe they have questions, but they've been, these are always available at the desk out front. The last thing I want to share with you is a very special lady in my life. Um, she has impacted untold number of children in her lifetime. Not only was she a Christian school teacher, but she has been a Sunday school teacher for as long as I've known her. Um, my daughter and son-in-law actually were in the Christian school where she taught, and she had an impact on them. So not only is this Robin, the children's ministry director, this is Robin, the mom. Gail Matting, would you come up here, please? Gail has been teaching here at Ramoth. up here, Gail. Gail's been teaching here at Ramoth for how many years, Gail? For 10 years. Those of you who are parents or grandparents who she has impacted your children, you know what I'm talking about. Gail sends cards. Gail prays. Gail checks in on your kids because Gail loves Jesus and she loves your kids. This is Gail's last Sunday to teach for us. She's moving to Florida to be with her family. We will miss her desperately here. I want to give her this pot that says Stafford County because I want her to remember all the seeds that she's planted, all the seeds that she's watered, and the untold number of children who have blossomed because of Gail Madding. Thank you so much for your time. That is faithfulness. I invite you, young people, those of you who are interested in children's ministry, it's a great place to serve. And if you're interested, please see me or see someone at the tables back there. I would love to talk with you on September, Saturday, September the 8th, I believe. Uh, yes, at 9 o'clock, we have child protection training. And we take keeping our children very safe here at Ramoth. I would love to see you come to that. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Ms. Robin, for sharing opportunities for service. And every week there are opportunities for service. If you've got a bulletin, you will see on the back, not just in the announcements on the back, opportunities for service. And so you might be saying, well, well Pastor, I, I, I don't know about children's ministry. Maybe, maybe that's not where God's calling me to serve. Uh, okay. Um, there are other opportunities for you to serve. Some of you, God is calling to serve in children's ministry. Um, some of you might say, well, l let me pray about it. I, I, I need to pray about it. Great, pray about it. But you know what? At the end of the day, we've got to put feet to our prayers because we can pray and pray and pray and pray. But I, I will guarantee you this. If you pray, God, help me to find just one, one place of service. Help me to find one place of service here at Raymond Baptist Church. 
I can guarantee you this. You will find a place to serve. It may not be where you think. It may not be what you used to do. It may be something different. But if you'll pray that prayer, God, I'm praying sincerely, earnestly, help me to find just one place to plug in, one place to serve. I will guarantee you that God will show you where to serve. So, folks, we've got opportunities in children's ministry, but we have other opportunities. You've got your bulletin there, right in the bulletin. We've got some opportunities for service now, not next week, not next month, not next year, but, but right now, Sunday morning coffee station. How many of you like to drink coffee? Okay, that, that was better than the first service, but now, how many of you like to drink coffee, but you don't want to raise your hand because you're not sure where I'm going with this question? I'm suspecting a lot more like to drink coffee than raise their hands. But you know, if you like to drink coffee, and even if you don't like to drink coffee, maybe you just like to serve, there's an opportunity on Sunday mornings for just two people. Doesn't take that long, 30 to 45 minutes to get coffee ready, get it up here. We've even brought the donuts. You don't have to worry about the donuts. You just set the coffee out. And we've got the box all ready to go. Very easy, very simple to do. You don't have to do that every week, but maybe you can do that once a month. Maybe you can do that once every couple months. You can say, you maybe a husband and wife, maybe a family together serving in that 8.15 to about 9 o'clock and get the coffee ready. Opportunity to serve. Maybe you have a, a passion for cooking. We have meals on Wednesday nights, and we're going to be starting those meals back in September. The third week of September, we have an opening for a team uh, that we need to cook. And so maybe you're a cook, maybe you like to help clean up or set up, and you can say, I would love to be a part of that third week team that, that cooks on Wednesday nights. Let me know. We would love to, to have you a part of that. Uh, maybe you, you can drive the bus. Maybe you can be a chaperone. Uh, Lou Steinhoff has been our bus ministry coordinator. He's done an excellent job, but he's relocated down with his job to Alabama for at least the next year. We need some folks to be able to drive the bus or to be a chaperone on the bus on Sunday mornings to pick up some kids. Those kids have been coming faithfully, and some of those children have actually been saved this past um, vacation Bible school. So what a wonderful opportunity. But those things are now, not next week, not next year, uh, but right now. You know, I, I was watching a, a, a church service not, not too long ago, and during their announcement time, uh, they needed some folks to, to bake some cakes. And they, they just kind of had a, a different way of getting people to volunteer to bake the cakes. They, they didn't have a tear-off where you could just sign up to bake the cake. And they didn't really do what I'm going to do, but it was pretty much like this. Uh, who would like to bake a cake? And they just waited for the hands to go up. Okay, I got one, I got two, and they, they needed about seven. You like to bake cake? All right, you wait. Hey, bake me a cake, I'll take it right in. Who, who would like, I'm not going to do that, but who would like to, to serve in the, the coffee station? Who would like to be the, the bus minister? Thank you, Mark. Who would like, so... Sign up, see me, but folks, there are opportunities to serve the Lord right here at Ramoth Baptist Church. And none of us are here by accident or coincidence. I believe God's brought each and every one of us here with purpose and with reason. And whether you've been here for generations, and some folks in our church have been here for six, seven generations, or whether you've just been here for six or seven weeks, we're all here because this is where God has called us to be. And he's called us ultimately to serve him with the gifts and talents that he has given to each and every one of us. And so I, I say this, if this is your church, if you call Ramoth Baptist Church your church home, some of you I know have not joined yet, but if, if this is your church home, then you need to serve. And if you can't serve here, then ask the Lord to help you to find a place where you can serve. But you know, in order to serve, there, there are three things that are required. The Apostle Paul talks about those in Romans chapter 12. If you have your copy of God's Word able to stand, uh, we read this morning Romans chapter 12 uh, verses 3 through 8. Uh, the word grace here is used multiple times. We've already sung about it this morning and ultimately it comes down to God's amazing grace that has transferred us from the domain of darkness into the marvelous light of his kingdom. Paul writes, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself or herself more highly than he, he or she ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, 
each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Father, we thank you this morning for drawing us here, not just today, but Father, we thank you for drawing us here to be a part of Ramoth Baptist Church, to be a member of the body of Christ here at Ramoth, ultimately to serve and to worship and to glorify you. Father, I pray this morning that through your word that you would speak to us, uh, that you would ignite a passion for service. Uh, no matter how young or how old we are, that uh, you would help us to uh, see those opportunities to serve you that are all around us each and every day, and that we would take advantage of those. Father, speak that we might not only hear, but might we put into practice all that you're calling us to do, that we might honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, folks, the, the question this morning, is are you serving? Where are you serving? And what is required to serve? Three things this morning, quickly. First, it's to stay humble. It's to stay humble. Look back in verse 3. Paul writes, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has a sign. In other words, what's Paul saying here? He's saying stay humble. Uh, being humble is the opposite of being prideful. And service simply cannot exist, cannot happen with a spirit of pride. Indeed, Jesus himself gave us the model of what it meant to serve not to be served. When he came, Philippians chapter 2, he, he left everything that he knew. He left his home in heaven and he came here. He did not have to, but yet because of God's amazing grace we sang about just a moment ago, he came, he emptied himself, took on the form of a human, was obedient, and humbled himself to the point of death, even death on an old rugged cross. Talk about the perfect model of what it meant to be humble. But folks, if we're to serve, we must stay humble. If we're to serve, we must set aside pride. And folks, this morning, there's some that, that need to set aside the pride of life that, that's like this. If you're counting on anyone or anything, including counting on yourself, counting on your good works, counting on your background, counting on your money, counting on your education, counting on your fame, if you're counting on anything other than the one and only Son of God to get you into heaven, then you are living a prideful life that will ultimately lead to destruction. Oh, you could be the most humble person in the world, at least from the world's standards. But we all know folks like that, don't we? That they're too humble to be proud. Some of you will get that later on this afternoon. Dedicated, brother. Folks, you've got to stay humble. And for some, that means giving up your self-sufficiency. For some, that means giving up the salvation that you think you have in and of yourselves. And humbly turning to Jesus Christ in repentance and faith. For some, you've never done that. And you still... Regardless of what the world says about you, you're still living a prideful life. But for Christians this morning, sometimes pride can get in the way. Sometimes pride can be our downfall. Sometimes pride can be our Achilles heel. Yes, we know we're supposed to be saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, the gift of God, not as a result of works, lest we should boast. But yet, somehow we get into this way of thinking that I, I just got, I got to do more, I got to do better, and we just got to do and got to do, and we, we can work, but we don't necessarily serve. See, folks, there's, there's a difference. It's a difference between working and between serving. See, God's called us to serve. God's called us to be in his employ. God, God's called us to humble ourselves, to where we are made less of 
and he is made more. John the Baptist, perhaps the greatest preacher apart from Jesus himself, when Jesus would come onto the scene, he recognized and knew, even with all the fame, even with all of Jerusalem coming out to meet him and to be baptized in the Jordan, you remember what old John the Baptist said, I must decrease while he must increase. If anybody would have had a reason not to stay humble, would have been old John the Baptist. If anybody had a reason not to stay humble, it would have been the, the Apostle Paul, a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he gave his long list of his background, but yet he said, I, I give it all up for the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. Talk about staying humble. If we're to serve the Lord here at Rainbow Baptist Church, if you're to serve the Lord for the time that you have on this earth, we must simply stay humble. But folks, we must stay connected. We must stay connected. What does that mean? Look back in verses 4 and 5. For it is in one body, Paul writes, we have many members. And the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. You look around. There's all kinds of different folks here in this worship service this morning. God has called all kinds of different people to be a part of the body of Christ here at Ramoth Baptist Church. No two people are identical. No two people are alike. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different talents. We all have different giftedness. But God has brought each and every one of us together individually to be a part of the body of Christ known as Ramoth Baptist Church. We must stay connected we must stay connected to the body we must stay connected to one another because we are connected in and through jesus christ christ is our connection point and by the way if you don't know jesus christ as personal savior and lord you might be a member of ramoth baptist church but you're not a member of the body of christ known as ramoth baptist church there is a distinction folks we are members of the body in christ Christ is the, the one who connects. And so if you've never trusted Christ as Savior and Lord, that's the very first step to be part of his body, not just universally, but his body locally here as Ramoth Baptist Church. We must stay connected. Why? Because when we're not connected to the body, we just kind of drift off and do our own thing. It, it doesn't take that long. In, in fact, some of you probably have struggled with that from time to time. Maybe even this morning, some of you are struggling with that. It doesn't take very long to be disconnected from the body. Oh, you miss a Sunday. Maybe you were sick. Maybe you were out of town. Well, I'll, I'll get back next week. Next week comes and something else comes up. Well, I, I'll get back. Well, the first of the month, that's a good time to, to start. Maybe I'll start the, the first of the month. Uh, maybe maybe you've moved and you're just coming to the area. Well, I'll, I'll get started soon. I, I'm just too busy. Sometimes people are just too busy to be connected, right? Have you ever heard? I'm just too busy. When I when I get unbusy, I'll I'll get back involved. Maybe some of you used to serve. You've served in the past, but you've just kind of stopped and you've just kind of taken a, a sabbatical. I, I'll get back to serving, but right now I'm just too busy. Now, I hear this a lot too with with younger families. And we want to do everything that we can to come alongside younger families. But I, I hear so many times, younger families, I, I'm, ju I'm, just, I'm just too busy to serve right now. When I, maybe a little bit later in life, because uh, I'm, I'm busy with, with getting my work up and going. I'm busy with my career. I'm busy with my family. I'm busy taking the kids to all kinds of after-school activities and traveling teams and practice. I'm just, I'm just too busy. But when I get unbusy, I'll, I'll begin to serve. Folks, we should never be too busy to serve the Lord. And if we're too busy to serve the Lord, one of two things is going to happen. God's going to get a hold of our, our heart and we'll come to the point in realization in our own life that we'll make steps to rearrange our schedule so that God is not somewhere down here, but God's up here and we'll, we'll get unbusy ourselves. That's the preferable way to get unbusy. But well, there's another way we can get unbusy, and God himself will get us unbusy. That's really not what you want to happen, because when God gets us unbusy, it usually entails a lot more 
trials and tribulations than we thought about if we just would have rearranged our schedule and had God all by himself at the top of our priority list. Uh, Folks, we should never be too busy to serve the Lord, but we must stay connected to the body. Because when we're not connected to the body, we just begin to atrophy and do our own thing and drift away. I was in Coles yesterday and the cashier that checked me out began to and to have a conversation with her, and it kind of came up that I was a pastor, and so as we were talking, it was just kind of a door that opened that I was able to say, well, where do you go to church? And if I ask that question, maybe you've asked that question to folks, well, where do you go to church? And if they go to church, they'll answer right away, well, I go to Raymond Baptist Church, that's my church. If there's any hesitation at all, and if there's any like, well, usually the well's a tip-up, well, She's, she watches First Baptist Church in Richmond on, on the television. That, that's great. I don't know anything about First Baptist Church in Richmond, but it's a Baptist church, so it can't be all bad, right? <laughs> but she watches First Baptist. A lot of folks watch, you know, they'll watch different people. Charles Stanley, God bless him. Wonderful. But that's not your church unless you live in Atlanta and go, can go to Charles Stanley's church at First Baptist Atlanta. That's not your church. Folks, We've got to be connected to the local New Testament, Bible-teaching, Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Christ-preached church. And if you can't do it here at Ramoth Baptist Church, then you need to ask the Lord to find some place where you can be connected. See, we have to stay humble. We have to stay connected to the body of Christ if we're going to serve the Lord. And then we just have to stay active. Look look back at verses 6 through 8. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to each, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith and service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. In this passage and several other passages in the New Testament, there are about 17 different gifts that have been given to Christians. You may not have 17, but you have at least one. And we're to use that one for his honor and for his glory and serving the church. And we're to be active. We're to stay humble and we're to be active. What does that mean? It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. If God is still giving you the ability, you're to stay active. I was with the senior men's Sunday school class yesterday at, at Fat Boys down on US 1. It used to be old Virginia barbecue. And so Fat Boys, and, and, and the, the name is very apt because if you eat there very often, But you know, we, we were there, got a great time of fellowship, and Brother Charlie was there, and after he finished his meal, not, I think not quite 90, but I'll give you 90, right? Because you're going on 90. You're the, got up, and began to walk around, and to engage people, and to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. Might have just been a hug, might have just been a kind word, but to engage them and talk... Folks, it doesn't matter whether you're 9 or whether you're 90 or somewhere in between. We can stay active in serving. It may not be the same way that you served when you were younger, but that's okay. God has still given us a gift to use in his service until Jesus comes again or until he calls us home. So what does that mean for Ramoth Baptist Church? I think I shared this on Wednesday night used to be the old 80-20 rule. 20% of the folks did 80% of the work in the church. I think it's probably closer to 10-90 right now. But, but let's just imagine, just imagine with me for a moment that 50% of the members of Ramoth Baptist Church used their gift in at least one area of service. What would that look like? What would our church look like if just 50% use their gift in some area of service. Man, we we would have lists of new ministries that we could start because we've got so many people to serve. But let's not stop at 50 because that's not what we're supposed to stop at. If you are physically and mentally able to serve, some folks because of physical health issues are no longer able to actively serve, although they can still pray and that's the best thing that they could possibly do. But let's just say 100% of everybody that could possibly serve at Ramoth Baptist Church as part of the body of Christ here actually served. Don't have to do five things. 
Don't have to even do three things, but just did one thing, one area of service. What would that look like? Phone call. Phone, pick up the phone. What would that look like if 100% of the members of Ramoth Baptist Church did at least one thing, served at least one area with their gift? Not, not five or ten, just one. What would that look like? It would look amazing, and it would look like the body of Christ that we're supposed to look like. Folks, God's called us here with purpose, with reason. He's given us gifts and talents to use. We simply must use them. And when we do, not if, when we do, I believe we will see God work and will for his good pleasure in ways that we can't even begin to imagine or comprehend. So let's not shoot for 80-20. Let's not even shoot for 50 Let's shoot for the whole thing. 100%. I guess, you know, and just a little bit, I guess I can't use that word anymore because I, I was talking with Sharon at Kohl's and I, and I finally bought something that I'd had my eye on for a long time. And I said, Well, I, I finally pulled the trigger. And, and I got this look. And then she's like, Oh, oh. I'm like, Okay. Sorry, I should not have. So I, can't use that term anymore, so I better not use it. So what would it look like if we all stepped up? Not, not next week, not next year, but right now. And said, wherever you need me, Lord, whatever you need me to do, here I am. Use me. Here I am. I'm ready to go, whatever it is. That's what God wants to do. He invites us to join him where he is already at work. He's inviting you to join him here. Are you ready? Let's go. Here I am, Lord. Use me to serve you for your honor and for your glory. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you have given us a place to serve here at Rainbow Baptist Church.